Good happy Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. It is Saturday, November 9, 2019. We have a lot of news to get to this Saturday morning, so let's begin. First step, Bloomberg to bypass New Hampshire of the other early voting states in expected run for president. Former New York City mayor's national strategy, if successful, could threaten future influence of first in the nation primary. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products, nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. In January, Michael Bloomberg said this to WMUR about the first in the nation primary. It is part of America. It's part of our culture and each campaign. That's the one thing you have in common. You know you got to go up and you got to make a case to the voters of New Hampshire. But it turns out he won't make a case to New Hampshire voters as he takes another step towards a 2020 run. The former New York City mayor filed Friday night to be on Alabama's Democratic primary ballot for president. A Bloomberg spokesperson tells News 9 if he runs, he'll avoid the four early voting states of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, and instead focus on the March 3rd Super Tuesday primaries and beyond. No candidate who's ever bypassed New Hampshire has been ultimately successful. And Michael Bloomberg is worth $52 billion, and so he can basically blanket the nation with advertising. WMUR political reporter John DeStaso says if Bloomberg goes on to become the Democratic nominee, it could be a major threat to the process in New Hampshire. We would always be first in the nation legally, but how much attention will be paid to the New Hampshire primary? if Michael Bloomberg is successful in bypassing the primary. The state's Democratic Party chair is disappointed and surprised, adding it's unfortunate that Michael Bloomberg doesn't want to participate in this invaluable, important, and unique primary process and be tested the same way that the other Democratic candidates have been and will be. Despite filing in Alabama, Bloomberg has not yet announced a formal decision to enter the race. You can read more by going to John DeStaso's story on WMUR.com. Live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man shot, injured during standoff with police in Ospie, officials say. Neighbors report hearing sounds of shots fired. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products, nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. I had people here raking leaves for me, younger gentlemen, and um, I was out talking to them and we could hear screaming from down the road. Lori Walton says she and her husband had several people doing jobs around her house on Thursday when she heard a commotion just a couple of doors down on Oakwood Drive in Ossipee. She says she became concerned and called the police. We had um, people here trying to install doors for us and they asked the gentleman to come in the house. And when they came back to talk to us moments later, they asked if we could all go into the basement. We heard gunshots off and on all afternoon. It was a pop, and then, uh, you know, some, a little bit of time would go by, and there'd be another pop. And then uh, later on in the evening, 
the pops got a little more consistent and then we heard louder louder shots officials say at 2:45 in the afternoon police came to the house to serve 53 year old john swanson with legal papers and arrest him but they say he refused to come out of the home. At about 7.56 p.m., Mr. Swanson was shot during a conversa confrontation with the officers. He was injured during the altercation and is being treated. Fitzgerald said that no officers or other civilians were injured in this confrontation. That They do say that this investigation is continuing. Reporting live in Concord, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Hollis woman to send more than 100,000 holiday cards to true. Cards come from 30 U.S. states and Canada. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jean Mackin. Twin-powered support technology with our Scott Living Mattress Collection. Let's dream big together. We're telling you now, you're going to dream big on a Scott Living Mattress. Sweet dreams. Wind your way through the stacks and sacks, boxes and bins along the trail of bales of mail. And you'll find Laura in her Hollis workshop. This is like uh, my Santa's workshop. <laughs> 16 years ago, she enlisted her family in sending holiday greetings to troops. <laughs> I love that one. Two years ago, she set a goal, 5,000 cards for everyone on board an aircraft carrier. She got triple that amount. So she formed the nonprofit Holiday Cards for Our Military New Hampshire Challenge to help with the postage and asked students across the state to sign on. The message that we want to give to our warriors to our freedom fighters who are far away from home. 50,000 cards went out last year, and this year, the challenge reached every state. So far, 30 states and Canada have sent in more than 100,000 cards. This box just arrived from schools in Hawaii. Look at all these cards. This is amazing. Look at Santa on the beach. And since it's primary season, tis the season to get all the candidates involved in writing cards. Here's Bernie. Here's Elizabeth Warren. Here's Governor Sununu. It's kind of like our own little first in the nation, right? We started this right here. New Hampshire, we're fierce, you know, we're small in size, but we're so large in heart. All this holiday spirit ships out in one week. In Hollis, Gene Mackin, WNUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That is so nice and very awesome to do. Buddha Judge unveils affordable housing child care plan in New Hampshire visit. Democrat presidential candidate shares thoughts on Bloomberg entering the race. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Kristen. Carosa. At Beltades, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltades Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Democratic presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg spoke at the Rex Theater in Manchester, his first stop of a four-day bus tour, unveiling a plan to help the middle class. We're going to create two million more affordable housing units and make sure that we end the backlog for families with children needing support for housing. We're going to make sure that child care, quality child care, is available free for low-income families and affordable for all, never rising above 10% of your income. He also answered questions about Medicare. I would propose having the reimbursements adjusted in a way to reward being a provider in a rural area. <laughs> 
know that we have this problem of the loss of providers. Uh, also, using reimbursement uh, levels to create more of an incentive for us to actually get to parity on access to mental health care as we do on physical. His visit comes one day after former New York City mayor, billionaire Michael Bloomberg, expressed interest in getting into the race. You know, there's there's been something like 25 people now uh, running for president. So uh, as a campaign, I think our focus has to continue to be on our message. It served us well. Not to get too caught up in, in what uh, any of the others are doing. Buttigieg then headed to Northampton to the Throwback Brewery for a tour where several supporters greeted him. I think our country is on the precipice of either greatness or ruin. And he's the guy that's going to bring us to a good place. I'm positive about it. Buttigieg will make several stops tomorrow, including Franklin and Berlin. Live in studio, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for today. We have three candidates in New Hampshire today. The first candidate we're talking about, Joe Biden. Joe Biden has two events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Firefighter Chili in Canvas kickoff in Concord, New Hampshire at 12 o'clock p.m. His second event, Town Hall at Colby Sawyer College in New Loudoun, New Hampshire at 3 p.m. Pete Buttigieg has four events today in New Hampshire. First event, Town Hall at Lebanon Middle School in Lebanon, New Hampshire at 10.30 a.m. His second event, Walking Tour of Franklin, New Hampshire at 1 p.m. His third event, Barn Party in New Hampton, New Hampshire at 2 p.m. In his fourth event, Town Hall at Berlin City Hall in Berlin, New Hampshire at 6.30 p.m. And Tulsi Gabbard, she's in New Hampshire today. She has one event, Town Hall at Salt Hill Pub in Lebanon, New Hampshire at 6 o'clock p.m. Those are all the candidates that are in New Hampshire today. Three middle schoolers allegedly plotted school attack, police say. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. alleged plot to attack a middle school in upstate New York. Authorities say they stopped a credible threat in their words by three students who they say were planning to use explosives and firearms to kill students and teachers. Here's ABC's Diane Macedo. Tonight, three middle schoolers are facing criminal charges in upstate New York after police say they plotted an attack on their own school. The plan was to enter the middle school with explosives, incendiary devices, and firearms to kill and injure students and staff. Police say it started as a reported threat from one student to another at Albion Middle School near Rochester. They immediately launched a full investigation. Numerous searches were conducted and several legally possessed firearms, electronic evidence, and other supporting material was seized. Investigators tonight say they're thankful someone spoke up. Because of the initial report of a threat to a student, lives were saved and this tragedy was averted. Those students, all under 16, are charged with conspiracy. Authorities are telling the community there the school is safe. David? All right, Diane, thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a nice day for coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.